Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Benovator, and as the top of the video suggests, um, I'm going to be making a kiln. Now, I can't guarantee that I'll finish this, because a lot of the times, uh, for some reason, one of my projects gets stalled or just completely stops, such as uh, my plane building. I pretty much finished my, um, I finished the drift trikes, but I sort of finished the um, chainsaw mini bike. Like, it was done, but it was just really shitty quality, and... Like, the bike frame itself was really good, but the engine, there was so many problems with it. It was just, it was a mess. So, I decided not to do that. So, what I'm doing instead is making a kiln. And for a while now, I've needed to melt down pop cans, because it's, it's a really useful thing to have. You just make a mold of any shape you desire, like what I usually do, is get wax, and I carve it into whatever shape I need, or diameter, whatever, like it's really moldable and then I put it in plaster of Paris and then I heat up that mold and pour out the wax once the wax is out I pour in the molten metal and it assumes the shape which works really well so in here I have probably a good I don't know at least five pounds um yeah it's uh there was a front of a drift trike and obviously I can't weld aluminum so I just, I only used the front of it and I bolted it to a um, steel frame, but it never got completed, but I might complete it someday. Um, so the rest of the bike was just free. Um, so I decided to cut it up. This is all aluminum. I easily have a good five pounds of it. I also have like 50 of these little pop cans. Like, I, I, I never... <laughs> really figured out how small I could get them, because, like, originally I crushed them, and then there, they're, like, an inch tall or so, which is small compared to the average can, but this right here, um, a while ago, I entered a contest to make a trebuchet, and, um, it turns out there, there was no way we could have won, like, there were these people who spent thousands of dollars on it, like, there was no way in hell we could have won it, so it was a real shame. Um, at the bottom of that bucket, there's a bunch of lead wheel weights, which all together weigh about 55 pounds. Um, that was what we used to run the trebuchet. Originally, we were going to use this. This was given to me by my friend, uh, Bob Budak. Um, he's an iron worker, and he just had this lying around. Now, I welded on uh, these two and this to give it better grip, and originally, it was supposed to be used as an anvil, um, and it, for all purposes, it works well. I also bolt motors to that, like small chainsaw motors, like the one I did on that mini bike. Um, I bolted it to this, and um, yeah, it worked. But ever since then, I haven't been using it, so now I can use it to crush pop cans. And it does an astoundingly good job. Um, it weighs 70 pounds. That uh, All that together only weighs like 60, including the uh, aluminum scrap on the top. So yeah, uh, one pop can, you don't even need to start the crush, you can just, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's, it's a bitch to lift though, so, film into the can. You just lift up the steel and then... Just like that. That's, I don't know, a sixteenth inch, maybe an eighth inch. It's super thin though. Like, it's, get the job done way easier, so you can just line them up and just, so that works out fantastically. And come over here, this, good job, um, see, we had this old 1950s gas can, but obviously it had, oh, god damn it, obviously this gas can had no worth to it. So I was like, might as well make it into the foundation of a kiln. So what I'm going to do is, this is what I use for drift trike tires. Drift trike tires. So when you place it in, there's a good, I don't know, inch and a half. Yeah, about between the uh, the can itself and, uh, and the pipe. So that's what I'm going to use. And then... 
I'm basically just going to do what I did before, put plaster of Paris around it, and it's not going to be a um, gas or coal or whatever powered. I tried that before, it doesn't work very well, it's inconsistent and it's expensive. It uses like $5 worth of uh, charcoal at a time. So instead I'm going to make it electric. And I, uh, I ordered, I'll put a link in the description to where I found it, it sells like multiples, like more than 10, you know. It sells large amounts and they're relatively cheap. I got mine, this Kenthal wire, for um, $14, that's K-A-N thal wire kenthal wire and it um when you give it 120 uh, 120 volts i think it was 14 amps of power it makes 4000 degrees well not 4 the 1400 degrees celsius which is about 2000 degrees fahrenheit which is perfect for melting aluminum and it also will be capable of melting brass but it'll just not be good enough to melt iron and steel, which is a shame, but whatever. Brass and aluminum are good enough. Um, the only things that I'm stressing are how to power it. Because, um, what is it? I was thinking, like, there's, it's very complicated. The basics of it is when it starts up, the resistance is much lower than when it's all heated up. Just because the colder electronics are the easier electricity passes through them. So as it heats up, it gets harder and harder um, to power. So therefore, you have to give it little power at start and a lot of power at the end. Um, there's complicated circuits. It's called like thermoresistors or something, or thyristors or something. Um, they, they're complicated, like phase angles and bursts. It's complicated. So. To keep things incredibly simple, I think I'm just going to do a dimmer switch. I know that's... If anyone has any better ideas, because I cannot for the life of me find a simple circuit that I can make. So I'm just going to put a dimmer switch and run it on the 120. And I'll obviously put a breaker in it if it gets like 20 amps or something. So yeah, I'm just going to drill some holes, run the Kenthal wire. Um, I can crush cans with this retardedly, needlessly large rod. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Um, so yeah. Pretty simple. Got plenty of aluminum, and hopefully I'll finish it, because I got a problem with not finishing things. So yeah. That's the basics of it. No guarantees that I'll finish it. Um, if anyone has any ideas of circuits to power this thing, because right now I'm just going to use a dimmer switch, and I'm not even sure that's recommended. Um, so any ideas to help me on that, I'd love it. And I was also wondering if Plaster of Paris is capable of uh, containing the heat, like whether or not air pockets in it will heat up and it will crack or not. Um, I'm just going to wing it, because obviously if it does break, then I'll just... But some sort of other thing, hopefully that'll work really well. Um, so yeah, that's my plans, and uh, peace.